Hi everyone, it's Nicole here today with a designer series project featuring the brand new Pika Frames from Mama Elephant. This is an awesome set of dies that creates a fun little peekaboo type window. You can see the little grid there. And then there are three shapes in addition to the window, kind of a postage edge shape, this standard A2 size stitched rectangle, and then a rounded stitched rectangle that's approximately three by four. I'm gonna start with the large A2 sized rectangle there, and I've attached it to this pattern paper that's kind of have, has a wood grain feel to it. And I'm using a little post-it tape to keep it positioned exactly where I want it to go. Then I'm taking the window, and only three sides and the window, the square parts of the windows will actually cut. The other long side will just score so you can kind of open it like a little frame if you want to. For my card I'm actually not going to be using it as an opening and I'll show you how I get around that when I get to putting the rest of the card together. So I'm simply, you can see there it kind of opens, I hope you can kind of see that score line there. So I'm going to set this aside for now, and I'm going to go ahead and cut an additional rectangle using the peekaboo frame or peeka frame here. I'm going to cut that from some Simon Says Stamp Fog card stock. And this is because the wood grain that I cut first is going to be the outside of the house for the scene I'm creating. And I didn't want the windowsill to be the same color as the outside of the house and I didn't want it to take away from what I'm showing on the inside of the card either so I chose a very light card stock from the fog uh, that's why I chose the fog colored card stock now I've also cut using that largest stitched rectangle again a piece from a scrap of white cardstock and also a piece from vellum. This is, I didn't have to cut the whole thing, I only need a portion of it. I want to keep that nice stitched detailing around the three bottom edges. I'm creating snow drifts along the bottom of my card. So in order to do that I always like to cut the, the large size first and then I took the landscape trio, the kind of wavy looking ones, or snow drifts in this case, and I'm going to cut those next, cutting that top edge so I can create that nice snow drift look along the bottom edge of my card. While I have my die cutting machine out, I'm going to go ahead and cut the dainty bow. This is also a mama elephant die, and I want to decorate the outside of my house, or the outside of the window, with a Christmas red bow. So I just cut that from some red cardstock. I'm going to set all of that aside for now and go ahead and stamp my images from Cozy Christmas and color them in with Copic markers. I'm going to speed through this. I will have a designer series project a little bit later this month featuring the Cozy Christmas and the coordinating Creative Cuts dies. As you can see, Mama Elephant has released some dies that coordinate with this stamp set that came out last year, which I absolutely love, and I will be using them today, but I'll do a little bit more in-depth on these a little bit later this month. To color in my trees, I'm using a feathering technique, and I started with one of my darker colors, and I'm simply laying the brush tip down and kind of flicking it down in quick strokes. So I want where each layer of the tree overhangs to be slightly darker than the rest of the tree. This is a really fun tree to color. I'm going to go in with my kind of mid-tone color here and then I'll finish with my lightest color and you can go back over it as many times as you need to to get the result that you want and I really did spend quite a bit of time on my tree. I wanted to get it just right I guess or the way I wanted wanted it to look. I went with a more more traditional color tree, very bright green. 
to finish each of these layers, then I did flip my design upside down. It makes it a little easier for me. And then I flicked up from the bottom up. Now, I wasn't terribly concerned. I, there, you can see a few little white spots here and there. I do go over it a couple times, and a lot of those get filled in. But I think a little of that adds to the texture of the tree. And so I purposely left some of those so that it adds a little bit additional dimension and texture and things like that. I did grab an even darker marker and then any of those little spots where you can kind of see through to the inside of the tree, I made those even darker so it really adds some nice shadowing and gives some nice detail there to the tree. Here's one of those coordinating cozy Christmas dyes. I'm going to put some post-it tape on that and set it aside while I color the rest of my images. I'll color in Santa. I'm going to have him holding a mug of hot chocolate in front of the window. And then the star for the top of the tree. I love that the hands are separate for the Santa here. It makes it so you don't have to do any fussy cutting in order to have either Santa or Mrs. Claus. There's both of them in this stamp set. I'm just using Santa today. But it makes it so that they can be holding the mug of hot chocolate or plate of cookies. There's several different images and so they can be holding one of those very easily, which I just absolutely love. Now I started with a very light red color and then I went back in with my darkest, deepest red to add my shading and detailing, and then I took my mid-tone color to kind of blend it all out. And most of the lightest color does get covered up. It's just, I always like to err on the side of caution. It's easier to go darker, but it's hard to go lighter. So I generally kind of start out, and if when I did my initial blending here, you can see it. It, it really didn't blend quite as nicely as I wanted it to, so I went back with my mid-tone color and added more, and eventually it gets to exactly the way you want it to look. With reds, I want to mention it's important to give a little drying time to your Copic markers. These are alcohol markers, and they do saturate the paper. That is how you get that nice blended look. However, I have found a lot of times with some of the darker colors, especially red, if you go over and keep blending and keep blending and the paper is so saturated and it's not drying in between uh, blending, it can bleed a little bit and it'll bleed into other areas of your design. So just kind of a little word of caution, give it a couple seconds to dry, maybe move on to another part of the design to color and then you can always go back and blend. That's the best thing about Copic markers is you can go over them as many times as you need to to get the look you want. For the mug, I decided to color it green. And I felt like it's very cute as is, but it was a little blah. So as I finished coloring in my design and I get it all blended here like I want it to look, I went ahead and took my white pen and added the white stripes to my little candy cane inside of, of the mug and then I added white polka dots to the mug and I love it. I think that makes it so much more fun and interesting to look at. With any of the white portions of my design I did use some cool gray Copic markers just to add shading and dimension. Now you might see here I have my card base and I used that card front that I cut originally from the wood grain paper to kind of to make sure I can line up the opening for the inside of my card. And that was simply made it easy because I want it to be exactly where that window opening is. And I didn't leave the die cut opening. I probably could have, but I felt like it was unnecessary. So I went ahead and just trimmed it out with my scissors. And then for the inside piece, I took a, a black pattern paper and die cut that with the rounded rectangle that's about three by four. This makes it great because it adds interest behind my colored images on the inside 
but down near the bottom of the card it leaves me some space to handwrite a greeting. Once that is exactly where it needs to go, I'll go ahead and position my star and I'll place the coffee or the hot chocolate mug rather in Santa's hands and glue his hands in place. I wanted to distinguish the little ball on his hat and the brim of his hat and the cuffs on his jacket from his beard. And by to do that, I added some clear Wink of Stella glitter pin to those areas. And I used the Sakura black gel pin to color in his belt and his shoes to add some interest. I'm ready to start putting all of this together now, now that I have those inside pieces. I added some adhesive to the outside of my card and glued the outside of the house in place using my zig glue pin to add some liquid adhesive and then I'll glue my window frame in place. I'll use some foam adhesive here to glue my white snowdrift along the bottom of my card and then a little dot of glue there to glue my bow that I've already assembled to my window. Now for the vellum snowdrift, this is where I'm going to add my greeting. I'm going to stamp that. This is a greeting also from Cozy Christmas with some Versamark ink. And I'll sprinkle on some silver embossing powder and heat set that. To attach it, I like to just kind of carefully apply some glue just along the edges and then back behind where I have the embossing on the greeting and then I'll place that right over the white snowdrift and to make sure that the, this doesn't curl up as it dries I set a acrylic block on top of that it's something nice and heavy just to hold it nice and flat while it's drying got some embossing powder all over the place that I need to wipe out of the way now I'm ready to attach the panel on the inside and I want to make sure it's lined up correctly. So I kind of checked and double checked that and that looks perfect. One last thing that I want to do for the outside of the card and that's to add some kind of faux snowflakes here and I decided to do, to do that with these cute little pretty pink posh sequins. I'm using both the sparkling clear and also the marshmallow sequins. So I use the sparkling clear in both the six millimeter and four millimeter and then the marshmallow in the four millimeter. I'm gluing those onto my card with some matte medium and using the quick stick tool to get them or to have perfect placement. I hope you've enjoyed this video showcasing the brand new Pika frames from Mama Elephant. For more information, please visit the Mama Elephant blog. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.